Today, the appetizer comes from Atlanta and Chef Gunter Seeger. It's a lamb roll stuffed with a ground lamb mixture and presented on slices of zucchini and eggplant. From the great Italian restaurant Spiaggia in Chicago, Chef Paul Bartolotta prepares a small plate light dining entree, poached langoustines in tomato and orange sauce. Dessert comes from the Peabody Hotel in Orlando, Florida. Executive pastry chef Gerard Partoons presents white chocolate mousse studded with white chocolate fans. At taping time, German-born Gunther Sieger was executive chef of the dining room at the Ritz-Carlton Buckhead in Atlanta. He has since opened his own namesake operation in the Buckhead area. The appetizer is lamb roulade on zucchini and eggplant carpaccio. Note that he makes the roll from thin slices. The farce, or stuffing, contains diced bell pepper sautéed in a little olive oil. Also, cubes of brioche, which were browned in the oven. Uh, for the uh, lamb pass, I have some uh, lamb shoulders, and it's cut in pieces. To make the farce, you use, uh, you always want to have your meat stay very cold, and when you make your farce, you want to have the farce being uh, very cold, so I put the bowl on ice. Season the ground meat with salt and pepper. And mix really good. You always stay, while you're making the fast, you always stay on the ice. Now we're adding some cream. Mixing it again. Now we have some thyme here. Very finely chopped. Other aromatics include chopped parsley and chopped garlic. Some chives. the uh, sautéed peppers. And the brioche. And that gets mixed again. The, uh, the brioche will soak all that cream off. Adjusting the consistency with a little more cream, the mixture is completed and chilled. Meanwhile, the chef fashions the roulade with a lamb loin. He cuts almost paper-thin slices lengthwise and overlaps them on a piece of plastic wrap. And you overlap it a little bit. Season with salt and pepper and add the farce. And the mousse goes inside. Then we roll. We lap this whole thing over like that. One more time. And then you fold the whole plastic, tighten it up. And then we tie it up. 
The roll is chilled for about an hour, then similarly rolled in overlapping bacon slices. And then we roll this, the uh, whole roulade in this bacon. And then that goes on the plastic again. And we try this up again. The same way than, you, than we did the roulade before. Chill this for at least two hours. Thin slices of zucchini and eggplant are cut using a mandolin. And the eggplant, same thing. The eggplant and zucchini are lightly sautéed separately in olive oil. They should not be browned. Then, in a clever adaptation of the Italian appetizer using shaved beef, carpaccio, the slices are arranged on a plate coated with olive oil. And we garnish the plate. We overlap one zucchini, one eggplant, Then we have some uh, tomato concasse. Those, are, those tomatoes are peeled and put in uh, boiling water for 10 seconds and de it and cut in uh, brunoise. The carpaccio will be run under a salamander or broiler just before presentation. Now a medallion is cut from the roulade. Cutting a nice uh, piece, like a medallion, with the plastic. The plastic always uh, stays on. And uh, then we take the plastic off. Saute in hot olive oil. This medallion can be cooked like, um, like a regular lamb. It doesn't need to be cooked all the way through because we're using the lamb loin. The carpaccio is removed from the salamander. Give him very nice color. And then get the grease off a little bit on paper towel. That goes in the middle of the plate. A chiffonade of basil will garnish. And then we garnish with all the basil. sprinkle again very good olive oil we need a very good olive oil this makes all the flavor here in the world for this dish we put that over it Thank you.
Executive chef and partner at Spiaggia is Paul Bartolotta. In 1997, this Milwaukee native received an award from the President of Italy, honoring his culinary achievements and calling him a goodwill ambassador for all things Italian. His entree is a light rendition of langoustines in tomato and orange sauce. Scampi con fonduto di pomodoro, arancia e menta. And what it means is chilled tomato, orange, and mint sauce that is served with warm poached langoustinos, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna clean one of these so you get an idea how you might clean it. You first, you pull the bottom part off, okay? And then you will crack them a little bit this way. All right, and then you just peel them open just a little bit. Make sure you broke through. And then you just peel the shell off this way. And then this piece of shell here too as well. Okay, and then at the very bottom you just sort of hold and you also will get any of the inside to come and peel out at the same time. Okay, and then what we'll do is we'll trim it up a little bit. If there's any parts that's not so beautiful, we're gonna trim that. We're gonna trim this a little bit, okay. And this is the clean langoustino. And as you can see, I have those already prepared for you. Okay, so we'll put that together with this one. Okay, in addition, I have some, some tomatoes that I simply scored at the top and cut, the, cut the, uh, the bottom off. I blanched it in very, very hot boiling water and then I shocked it immediately after, it was only in the water a few seconds, in ice water and that allowed the skin to peel off very easily, so I have some peeled tomatoes that for this particular dish, your enemy will always be excessive liquid. So we're gonna take and cut this a little bit. And we're just gonna take this off. This particular dish is a dish that can be done only when you have good tomatoes. If you don't have a good tomato, don't even bother. And right now we have some nice um, plum tomatoes that are nice and ripe, so So all I want is the supreme part. And then, when we get done with this, I will show you the garnish that we do with this. We make little diamonds here by cutting it and then cutting it at an angle. And this is about the size diamond that we want to use. Okay. And then we have an orange that we, we peel to make segments. And what we do is we peel very carefully. We cut either side of the, of the orange off peel it down real nice and smooth so we retain its shape, and then basically make some nice segments out of the orange. And this is gonna be used for both making the sauce and also for the garnish. So the dish will be prepared this way. We're gonna take a pot and we're gonna warm up a Ligurian olive oil in here. So you want an, an olive oil that's very, very light. You don't want anything that's too strong. And I'm gonna put in here a few mint bouquets. And I leave the stem on because it's not gonna cook very long. So we're just gonna make it just, just a little bit warm. We do not wanna make it extremely hot. We just wanna cook it long enough so we extract the flavor of the mint into the oil. And we flavor the oil just a little bit. Okay, so to this I'm gonna add some of the tomato segments here. So the tomato supreme to the dish. And then again, some of the orange. And once again, I reemphasize that liquid is your enemy, so you want to keep this a real nice dry compote. Salt is added. Not a lot, just a little bit. And while we're at it, for poaching the langoustinos, we're going to put some salt in the water for these as well. Okay. So these are our langoustinos. Okay, so we're just gonna cook this very, very slowly. We wanna make a little bit of a pulp. You can already smell the flavor of the mint coming out. 
and we just want to cook this very, very slowly. It's not a long cooking process. It's basically to make everything nice and warm and so that all the flavors been, blend together. It's essentially a, a cold dish. So we don't want to give the impression that it is a cooked tomato sauce or that it takes on the flavor of, of a, a cooked orange. We want to leave it nice and light and nice and fresh. The mixture is chilled over an ice bath, then processed. Garnish includes a chiffonade of mint with pieces of tomato and orange warmed through. Okay. The mint was removed before the hand processor is used. Strain the sauce before presentation. We're going to now warm up this a little bit and poach a few of our langostinos in boiling water and I just curl them over so they re retain a nice curled shape. We'll do just say one extra. The compote is placed on the chilled sauce. We're gonna garnish this with a nice mint bouquet. Okay, and then just a drizzle of the oil, just right here on top. After his apprenticeship, Gerard Partoons worked in his native Belgium, then came to America first working at the fancy Ritz-Carlton Monolani in Hawaii, then at the pastry stations of hotels in Arizona. His dessert features white chocolate mousse. Notice the dramatic method for saucing the plate. White chocolate ganache is started with hot cream and honey. The honey will make the ganache a little bit more pliable and also serves as a sweetener. The white chocolate I'm using is the, um, a, let's say, European chocolate, which is called Couverture. Um, the difference between that, this has a very high butter, butter uh, coconut butter, uh, excuse me, cocoa butter, fats content. The mixture goes over heat and is stirred until the chocolate melts. Then it's refrigerated for four hours. After it's chilled, the ganache is combined with heavy cream in an electric mixer. This will go extremely quick. It's a very fatty mixture. There's very much cocoa, coconut butter. The mousse will be piped onto rounds of almond sponge cake. They'll be soaked in orange-flavored simple syrup. Liquor. We can use the syrup, which is made with water and uh, sugar, and adds any, basically any liqueur you would like to, but I recently used now um, a nice orange liqueur. The top of the cake here is a little bit more crusty. So I'm going to use the bottom of the cake. It will absorb more of the liqueur or the syrup. Raspberry liqueur would be very delicious too. The mousse is piped onto the cake round. Melted chocolate is also used to fashion fans that will garnish the mousse. First, the chef tempers the chocolate. What I'm going to do now is incorporate cold air into the chocolate while it cools down on the marble or the slate and mix the sugar crystals together. Okay. Next, after we temper the chocolate, we're going to add a little bit of salad oil. This is a very small percentage, maybe about to this amount, a, maybe a quarter of a cup. What this will do, will make the chocolate more pliable because it is ultimately made out of uh, cocoa butter and 
the cocoa butter will make it harder. It's a hardening agent. The salad oil will make it more pliable. So make sure it's very nicely incorporated. Then the fans are made by spreading the chocolate onto a chilled surface and immediately shaping. Using various colored sauces, the chef demonstrates an interesting approach to decorating a plate. He hand cranks this whirly gig. The final garnishes include sprinkled cocoa powder and fresh berries.